Well, hello, it's Bobby, aka Pigeonator, and I'm here with my October TBR game. Okay, so my September reading did not go well. I finished some books, but not all, and I also went off of my TBR list to read The Final Gambit, which is the third book in the Inheritance Game series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Totally worth ditching my list for that one. I did read quite a few on my list, and um, but not all of the ones I was supposed to. Having said that, I'm still going to go ahead and do the full 10 prompts for October just because I have so much fun playing this game. And in the end, like, there's no way to really lose the game. Either way, you're reading. Maybe you're reading a little, maybe you're reading a lot. So um, let's go ahead and get into the rolls. All right, so here's Ron, and we're going to go ahead and with roll number one. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. A blank, which is to pull a card. Now, I don't have many cards left that I haven't used. In fact, I have two, but I want to use these before I restart with the whole deck. So I'm just going to flip them several times and pull this one. Ember Island, a friend picture next read. All right, I've got some friends I can consult. So, roll number one got us Ember Island, a friend picks. And I reached out to my friend Andrea and um, gave her a bunch of different choices, and she chose Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is a middle grade series, which is really helpful for me because I have a goal to read more middle grade. I'm on the library committee at my school, and one of the things that I really want to do as part of that committee is to push more middle grade books rather than YA for those readers that are like 6th, 7th, maybe even down to 5th grade that just want something a little bit older than like the elementary chapter books, but aren't quite ready for YA. Having said that, we have small spaces here, which does look quite spooky. This says, at night they will come for the rest of you. It is with this ominous warning that 11 year old Ollie and her two friends, Coco and Brian, set out on a chilling adventure in the woods with the nightfall fast ascending and the ever watchful eye is of scarecrows on their backs. What had begun as an unremarkable school trip to a nearby farm soon became becomes a frightening journey into the world behind the mist. In order to survive and not remain trapped there forever, Ollie and her friends need to be quick on their feet as they work to unravel a hundred-year-old mystery, save their classmates, and beat the villainous smiling man at his own game. Rule number two. Three. One, two, three. Sneak peek. So for this one, I have to consult someone else's TBR and pick a book from there. So rule number two got a sneak peek, which is to look at someone else's TBR and pick a book from there. And I am stretching the rules a little bit on this one, but it's okay. Um, my favorite TBR game to watch on YouTube is Jade from Jade Ray Reads, her TBR pursuit game. And so I just went to her channel and went to, um, there was a listing for TBR videos and I saw one that was for the month of March. Now I'm not sure if this was this year or last March. Um, but I knew that in March she focuses a lot on middle grade, and again, I have a goal to read more middle grade, so I clicked on that video, and the first book she spoke about was Amari and the Knight Brothers. Now, I have read that one, but on my way to me from Amazon, like it's not here yet, but will be soon, is Amari and the Great Game, which is a sequel. Um, and I've been really, really excited about reading that one because I loved Amari and the Knight Brothers so much. So I'm going to be reading that one. I don't have it physically to hold up for you, but I will pop a picture up here, or maybe I already have, um, for you to see. Uh, and I suppose I should read a little description about the... Well, no, I can't because it's a sequel. But what I can tell you is the first one is about a girl called Amari whose brother goes missing. And while like snooping through his stuff, she discovers something that leads her to this world of this magical academy and different things like her, she learns her brother was kind of like a magical men in black agent if there's such a thing and his disappearance there's some shady stuff happening and she's going to enroll in the academy so that she can become part of this world and hopefully find and save her brother rule number three five one two three four five trust something trust I can't read that tiny. Trust exercise. Close or cover your eyes, spin in a circle, and randomly touch one of your books. Repeat a few selected one you've read until you touch one you haven't. 
for digital books make a list and point. Okay, that will be interesting. Okay, so rule number three got us trust exercise and I'm supposed to close my eyes and pick, which I'm more than happy to do. I'm not gonna stand up though because I don't feel comfortable showing my whole body on camera. It's just not something that I'm going to do. So there are four shelves kind of within frame that I can reach um, that have books that I haven't read. I'm going to do any mini mini mo between those four shelves and then once the shelf is selected, I will close my eyes and pick something, okay? Okay, so I got this shelf that's kind of down low behind my back here. I will turn around, close my eyes, and run my fingers like back and forth till I'm kind of not sure where I am on the shelf, and then pick something. Um, intentionally feeling for a paperback. I don't know, is that cheating? I just was in the mood for a paperback. I don't know, but I landed on Sunshine by Robin McKinley. This says they took her. It was a dumb thing to do, but it wasn't that dumb. There hadn't been any trouble out at the lake in years, and it was so exquisitely far from the rest of Sunshine's life, she just needed to be alone with her thoughts for a minute. But then the vampires found her. Now chained and imprisoned in a once beautiful decaying mansion, alone but for the vampire Constantine shackled next to her, Sunshine realizes that she must call on her own hidden strength if she's to survive. But Constantine is not what she expected of a vampire, and soon Sunshine discovers that it is he who needs her more than either of them know. So, um, this week newspapers blurb this as a dark, sensual vampire fairy tale. I've er heard other people, um, speak about this book as a better version of Twilight. I don't know if that's going to be true. Um, we'll just see what happens, I guess. Roll number four. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plus four means I move forward four spaces. One, two, three, four. Team Avatar. So this is a friend or family member pick, so I'm really going to put my friends through it this time around. Roll number four got us Team Avatar, which is a friend or family member pick. And I thought, you know what, I'll just ask Andrea to pick two books. So she picked small spaces for the first one, but then again, I sent her a lot of choices. And the second book that she picked was The Devil in the White City, Murder, Magic, and Madness at the Fair that changed America. This is by Eric Larson. It is a National Book Award finalist. It is also nonfiction. It is about the Chicago World's Fair in the 1890s when um, H.H. Holmes was uh, preying on people and he's like America's first serial killer. This says, bringing Chicago circa 1893 to vivid life, Eric Larson's spellbinding bestseller intertwines the true tale of two men, the brilliant architect behind the legendary 1893 World's Fair striving to secure America's place in the world, and the cunning serial killer who used the fair to lure his victims to their death. Combining meticulous research with nail-biting storytelling, Eric Larson had cr has crafted a narrative with all the wonder of newly discovered history and the thrills of the best fiction. Oh, so is this actually a fictionalized account? Someone had told me this was nonfiction. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Roll number five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. We have the element triangles. Okay, so I have a random number picker, and I've tried to hold it up to the camera, but because of the light that I'm using and... Just the reflective nature of the iPad. Like you can see right here, it's going to reflect my camera. If I move it further in, it's going to reflect, <laughs> reflect the umbrella light that's over here. So you're just going to have to trust me that I'm going to say the right thing. It's set to generate a number between one and four. So I'm going to hit it once, twice, three times. And it gives me the number four, which is Earth. And that means a contemporary read. Roll number five gave us element triangles. And we got Earth, which is a contemporary and I thought, ooh, is this a good excuse to have like a spooky contemporary or like a mysterious one? Yes. So I chose the Agathas. You may remember from a not too long ago haul. This is by Kathleen Glasgow and Liz Lawson. And the blurb tells us, last summer, Agus Olgovy's basketball star boyfriend, Steve, dumped her. Then she disappeared for five days. She's not talking, so where she went and what happened to her is the biggest mystery in Castle Cove. Or it was, at least, because now another one of Steve's girlfriends has vanished, Brooke Donovan, Alice's ex-best friend, and it doesn't look like Brooke will be coming back. Enter Iris Adams, Alice's tutor. Iris has her own reasons for wanting to disappear, though unlike Alice, she doesn't have the money or the means that could be changed by the hefty reward Brooke's grandmother is offering to anyone who can share information about her granddaughter's whereabouts. 
The police are convinced Steve is the culprit, but Alice isn't so sure, and with Iris on her side, she just might be able to prove her theory. In order to get the reward and prove Steve's innocence, they need to figure out who killed Brooke Donovan, and luckily Alice has exactly what they need, the complete works of Agatha Christie. If there's anyone who can teach the girls how to solve a mystery, it's the master herself. But the town of Castle Cove holds many secrets, and Alice and Iris have no idea how much danger they're about to walk into. Roll number six. Two. One, two. Blank, which means we have a card, and we have one card left that we haven't used in this deck. That is Katara, read a tome. Okay, so does that mean a large book? Like, a, when I hear tome, I think of, like, a long book. Um, however, knowing that my September reading was crap, I might try to go easy on myself and say, okay, like, maybe 400 pages is a tome and not go, like, super crazy. We'll just kind of see how the month plays out, to be honest, or how, like, things go when I'm looking for books to fit these prompts. Roll number six got us Katara read a tome. And like I was saying, I think I'm going to go for something that's not like massive, like prior to the orange tree size. We don't want to go crazy, right? So I did find a book that was over 400 pages, and it's one I've been excited about for a bit. It is Cake Eater by Allison Dahlin. Um, it's the year 3070, and Marie Antoinette has just arrived at Versailles. Marie is an app sensation, a style icon, and the maven of social influence with millions of followers. But here in the glamorous Franc Kingdom, her job is simply to marry Louis Auguste. Unfortunately, Louis doesn't seem interested in Mary, uh, Marie, excuse me, making her feel lonelier than ever in this new country. Fortunately, Marie has a distraction. Opulent parties and decadent after parties abound in Versailles. But beneath the luxurious world lies the sinister un underbelly. When a storm hits Versailles, it reveals uh, the gilded world around Marie and Louis for the cracked and facade. When a storm hits Versailles, it reveals a, the gilded world around Marie and Louis for the cracked facade it truly is, a hideaway for the rich and powerful, while people outside suffer and starve. Determined to set things right, Louis and Marie must devise a way to right the wrongs of generations past and outwit those who want to keep them pawns in a deadly game. Roll number seven. Six. I'm rolling lots of high numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another card. So we're going to take these two that we use, and we're going to get the rest of them out of my little pack here and shuffle everything back together. All right, we just want to give these cards a good mix. You can see there's tons and tons of cards that G made to go with this game. So that tells you that I have been playing this for a really long time if I have run through all of the cards here. Oops. Okay, so what are the odds of pulling one of the two that we've already used? Hopefully that won't happen. Um, if it does, then we'll redraw. Okay, I'm just going to pull one right off the top. <laughs> it's Ember Island, <laughs> which we already got during this game, so it's going to go back in the deck. And we're going to pick another one. Azula, a book with a morally gray characters or villains POV. Number seven got us Azula, a morally gray or villain, uh, or villains characters POV. So I think this one fits, and we're going to just say that it does anyway. This, look at this creepy, creepy cover. This is nothing but blackened teeth. It was recommended to me by the TBR um, service. And it seems as though we're going to get at least some of the villain's POV. So this says, a uh, hay and era mansion stands abandoned, its foundations resting on the bones of a bride, and its walls packed with the remnants of the girl's sacrifice to keep her company. It's the perfect venue for a group of thrill-seeking friends brought back together to celebrate a wedding. A night of food, drinks, and games quickly spirals into a nightmare as secrets get dragged out and relationships are tested. But the house has secrets too. Lurking in the shadows is the ghost bride with a black smile and a hungry heart, and she gets lonely down there in the dirt. So that part is kind of what makes me think maybe part of it's from her point of view or maybe all of it. Um, yeah. NPR calls this book stunning. Shauna McGuire says beautiful and brutal and heartbroken. We shall see. And it's little, which doesn't hurt. Roll number eight. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Cabbage pot. Oh, boy. Rule number eight got us cabbage pot, and as you may remember, the last time I had a cabbage pot, everything's stuffed into this jar, like packed, it's to the point where I can't reach in and draw one. So we are going to dump all of this into my top hat and draw out of a hat. 
All right, I've got everything put into the hat. And if I have happened to read this, the book that I picked since um, making this list and printing these slips out or have picked it for something else, then I'll just go ahead and redraw. Let's see. Okay, I've got a hold of one. What have we got? That looks like Bent Heavens. Is that, yep, Bent Heavens by Daniel Krause. Okay, so here is Bent Heavens. And the dust jacket says, Liv Fleming's father went missing more than two years ago, not long after he claimed to have been abducted by aliens. Though Liv has long accepted he's dead, she hasn't given up all of their traditions. Every Sunday, she and her childhood friend Doug Monk trudge through the woods to check the traps her dad left behind, traps he set to catch the aliens he so desperately believed were after him. As she begins her senior year, Liv decides she is done with childhood fantasies, done pretending she believes her father's absurd theories, done going through the emotions for Doug's sake. But on the very day she chooses to destroy the trap, she discovers in one of them a creature so inhuman it can only be one thing. In that moment, she's faced with painful realization her dad was telling the truth and no one believed him. Now she and Doug have a choice to make. They can turn the alien over to the authorities or they can make take matters into their own hands. I've heard this book um, praised when I went to a training on uh, books for teenagers um, and I hope that it is as good as it sounds. Can you see the upside down skull in the water? Mm. Roll number nine. Six. Make sure I'm going the right direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the circle thingy. I should know what this is. I, is that the one where I have to cut my rolls in half? Yeah, round arrow. Respin and keep moving. No need to pull a prompt. Basically an extra move. Okay, so re-rolling for number nine. Three. One, two, three. And we're picking another card. Okay, I've been trying to shuffle these and there's so many that it's like kind of out of control. Cactus Juice. Read a book by a new-to-you author. Roll number nine got us Cactus Juice, a new-to-you author. So I went again for another middle grade. This is a spooky middle grade because it's October, right? We need to read spooky. The Girl in the Lake. This one was recommended to me by the TBR service. And it says, don't be afraid of the water. Celeste knows she should be excited to spend two weeks at her grandparents' lake house with her brother Owen and their cousins Capri and Daisy, but she's not. After failing her swimming lesson, she is done with the water, and she knows her, the trip is just a way to get her in the lake. Her grandparents are strong believers in their family, knowing how to swim, especially having grown up during the time of segregation of public pools. They want Celeste to have the opportunities they never did. Celeste insists on spending her visit on dry land, but soon strange things start happening when she's alone. The sound of footsteps overhead late at night, a flickering light in the attic window, and then Celeste's cousins start accusing her of playing cruel pranks on them when she's been nowhere near them. Things at the old house keep getting scarier until one evening Celeste looks in the steamy mirror after a shower and sees her face but twisted, different. Who is the girl in the mirror and what does she want? Past and present mingle in this spine-tingling ghost story by Indy Hell Brown, author of The Forgotten Girl. Okay, here's our last roll, number 10. One. Burnout. So burnout just applies to like your future roles within this round of the game. Um, and having to have them as you move. So as for the actual space itself, we'll just go ahead and pick another card. Pian Dao. Read a book with a one-word title. And last but not least, roll number 10 brought us the card Pian Dao, a one-word title. And so again, I'm going for a middle grade. If you are looking for more YA books in this um, TBR video, my apologies. If you want some YA book recommendations, shoot me an email. Uh, my email address is always in the description box below or even comment on this video and say, hey, I want some YA recommendations for this and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, but anyway, I am shooting for more middle, middle grade this month and I went with Spineless uh, by Samantha San Miguel. Wild boar, alligators, hammerhead sharks. Can 12-year-old Algy Elmsworth survive the swamps of South Florida? More importantly, can he survive his asthma attacks long enough to make a scientific discovery and fulfill his dream of becoming a real naturalist? With the help of Frankie and Lulu, intrepid heiresses to the Hotel Paraiso, Algy embarks on the adventure of a lifetime as he escapes certain death, discovers a brand new species, and goes head-to-head -head with diabolical thieves, all while a deadly and mysterious red tide ravages the beaches and a possible curse threatens to close down the Hotel Paraiso for good. Can Algy, Frankie, and Lulu save themselves, solve the mystery of the hotel's curse, and save their never-before-seen species? 
All right, so here is my TBR stack for the month of October. Um, I've got a good balance of um, large books to small books, I feel like. And even though I was trying to get more middle grade, I do have some that are YA. I've got one, two, three, four YA and one that might be new adult. I'm not sure on Sunshine by Robin McKinley. I might have to check on that. But anyway, um, I think this is a good variety. I'm excited to make a new fresh start in reading in October and just like see if I can reset myself because September has been a lot. Um, but anyway... I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Hope you all are having a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.